Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we are going to talk about uh, another interesting video in the Kubernetes series and the topic name is static pods, right? So we'll understand what is static pod, why it is required, how we have to create our own static pod, what is the role of it, where it is used. Okay, so we'll talk about all those concepts. So let's first understand the concept. Perfect, so let's get started. <clears throat> so now, uh, before we talk about a uh, static pod, let me uh, talk about uh, control plane components. Control plane components. So we already discussed about uh, control plane components. Like for example, we talked about API server. Okay, what is the role of API server, what it does, right? We also talked about ETCD, okay? ETCD is kind of a database which stores complete information about the cluster. Then we talked about a scheduler <clears throat> and a scheduler basically uh, is responsible for scheduling your pods on a different, different nodes. And then we talked about a controller which is more about uh, providing the high availability to our pods, right? So these are the four important components we talked about. So now we know that these are four important component which are responsible for which are responsible for managing our custom pod. Like for example, I have a .NET application. Okay, I have a .NET application, or I have a, any Node.js application. So this application I want to deploy it in the Kubernetes cluster. So for this applications, we first of all create an image and we push this image to some registry and then we create a pod okay which has this reference to this particular image okay and then this pod whatever pod we create for this pod basically all these components will help us to create this pod as well as manage this pod okay that's what these four components are helping us okay but now we have another concept called as a static pod. Now, what is the role of static pod or how static pod works? Basically, a static pod is nothing but a, a pod which is cre created and managed by Kubelet. So now we know that Kubelet component is there on each node. Okay, This is available on each node. So a static pod is nothing but a pod which is directly managed by the Kubelet. Okay, where these components are not involved. Okay, Kubelet manages the static pod. Now, how does Kubelet get to know that what all static pod I need to create or manage or maintain? So basically for this Kubelet, there is this one configuration called as a static pod path. Okay, there is one configuration which is called as a static pod path. So under this path, if you put any pod YAML, okay, under this path, if you just put any YAML, it will take care of creating the means completely managing the complete life cycle of this pod will be completely managed by the Kubelet. We don't need any help from this control node component, control plane components. Okay, so if you add that pod.yaml, it will create that pod. If you remove that, it will remove that. So that's what the kubelet will take care of, okay? And it will, we call this a static pod, okay? If the kubelet is creating this, we call it as a static pod. Now, one more thing, this control plane components are also running as a pod, right? These are also running as a pod. So what is our understanding is that our custom pods are managed by this component which are also running as a pod. And who is managing this? Who is managing this control plane pods? So basically, what, hap what is happening is, this control node components are actually created as a static pod, okay? And this static pods are managed by the Kubelet, okay? So usually for our custom application, we really don't need to create a static pod, okay? Because if we have this management component, control pen component, which are managing our custom pod, 
we really don't need to create a static pod, okay? But in case, if required, this is how we will have to do. Write your YAML, put it in the static pod path, and then Kubelet will take care of it. And whichever node you want to create it, make sure you are putting your file on that particular node static pod path, okay? Because Kubelet is there on each node. So they will have, each Kubelet will have their own static pod path. So we have to put the YAML. Okay, but how this master node or a control plane components got created, for that it's very important to understand the static. Okay, so let's see, I hope everyone understood the concept. So let's see the, let's see practically. So now let me show you master node component first. So if I do kubectl gate pod hyphen n cube system, cube system is the namespace where all the master node or a control plane components are run. So especially you can see, uh, ETCD, the API server, controller, and scheduler. These are the four controlling components created as a static pod. So if you see all these pods, you will see some difference in the name of the pod. So whichever pods are static, you will see that they have the node name added at the end of the pod name. Okay, they have the node name added at the end of the pod name, like cube API server kind control plane, controller manager kind control plane, your scheduler kind control plane, etcd kind control plane, right? So identifying the static pod is very easy. If you see that a node name is attached at the end of the pod name, then we can easily understand that, okay, this is a static. Now, how Kubelet is managing this static pod, right? We have a Kubelet running here, okay? If I do ps ef, and then if you just grab the kubelet service, you will see that. Uh, okay, now one more thing. The cluster that I have created is a kind cluster, okay? That means I created this cluster by using the containers. So here you can see I have a three containers running. And these three containers are working as our nodes of Kubernetes cluster, right? So Kubelet is running inside the nodes, right? So we have to log in inside this container to see the Kubelet process, right? So let's log in inside this. How to log in? These are container, right? So docker exec hyphen it, the pod name and bash. Now we are inside the container. Now I can do ps hyphen here pipe grip Kubelet, okay? And if you run it, you can see Kubelet process is running. And this Kubelet process, has one config file, varlib kubelet config.yam. Okay, this is the config file used by the kubelet. And in this config file, you will see that there is a static pod path mentioned. So what is that path? ETC Kubernetes manifest. So as soon as if you put any YAML file under this static pod path, kubelet will take care of managing the complete life cycle of that particular. So let's go inside this. And if I do LS here, you can see whatever our control plane components are there, their YAMLs are available at this location. And that's the reason Kubelet is directly managing those. So if you want to create any your custom pod by using a static pod concept, we have to put that YAML here. Okay. So let me come out of this container. And what I'm going to do is, let's say this is my simple pod.yaml. Okay. This is my simple pod.yaml and I want to create this as a static pod. So what I need to do, I need to copy this pod.yaml into this location inside the container. So how to do? We can use a docker cp command, docker cp pod.yaml. Okay, let me check if this pod.yaml have any dependency. Yeah, you can see it is using some volume. So it has the volume dependency. So I'll just remove that dependency because we may not have a volume that volume doesn't exist. So I'm just creating this, or, or let me just do one thing. Let me create one simple pod. So kubectl run nginx hyphen hyphen image is equal to nginx hyphen hyphen dry run is equal to client hyphen oyaml. And then I'm redirecting it to the pod.yaml. And then this pod.yaml, I'll copy. Docker cp pod.yaml. And then I'm copying where I need to copy. We need to copy it to the, our kind control plane. 
Okay, so I'm just going inside this colon where we need to copy. We need to copy at this particular path. Okay, now one more thing before I create it, you can see kubectl get pod. I don't have anything in the default namespace, right? But let's go and create it. So as soon as I create, I, I'm just copying this file there. Now, if I go back and check the pod, you can see the pod got created, Nginx pod. And then you can see this is the node name got added there. So that means this pod got created as, as a static pod and it's completely managed by the kubelet, okay? If I go and remove that file from there, automatically this pod will be deleted, right? So now to remove it, what I'll do, I'll just log in inside the container. And then what I'll do, I'll just remove etc Kubernetes manifest where we copied pod.yaml as soon as I remove and if we come out and do kubectl get pod, you can see we don't have that pod. It got deleted. Why so? Because we deleted the file, right? So this is how, if required, you can create a static pod path. And all our control, pod, uh, control plane components are running as a static pod. Okay, so I hope everyone understood the static pod concept. If you have any query, please put it in a comment. And if you like the video, please uh, subscribe it. If you are not subscribed yet, and also share it with your friends, okay? So thanks everyone. Uh, we'll come back with uh, another interesting video. Thanks everyone.